Good day dear chess lovers, Soren here and in today's video I want to share with you a very dramatic game played between Italian chess grandmaster Sergio Mariotti and Danish chess grandmaster Bent Larsen. This is a game played in 1975 in Milan. The game was suggested by one of my viewers, so thanks a lot dear Jacopo. Also let me tell you that Mariotti was the first Italian to achieve the title of Grandmaster. With that being said, now let's get started with the game. Mariotti with white pieces opened up with e4 to which Larsen answered with c5. Sicilian defense is on the board against which white is choosing a sharp wing gambit, b4. And once black c pawn is lured away, white is occupying the center with d4. e6, a3, d5, e5. Uh, we have a French defense type structure. And let me tell you that a similar position we can also reach when starting the game uh, with French defense. With one difference that, for example, in this case, we have a knight on f3. Uh, instead, we see Sicilian defense, and this is what happened on the board. Bishop d7, knight a3, knight e7, bishop d3 a6 knight e2, so white is keeping the f pawn's path free, uh, h4, uh, by pushing forward the h pawn, white wants to grab space and restrict the movement of black's pieces. Also, if needed, white can switch his rook into the attack from the third rank, which is a very standard idea in French defense. b5 knight c2, f6, in the style of French defense, black is undermining white center, knight f4, opening up the queen's diagonal, queen e7, queen g4, and once Larsen castled queen side, Mariotti moved back the queen on e2 and targeted the pawn on b5. f takes e5. Knight c4 is a more solid try, but instead we see f takes e5 and a staggering bishop takes b5 move followed. Now we have two hanging pieces. Black accepted the uh, bishop sacrifice, queen takes b5, bishop e8, queen a6 check. Black king is exposed and now white will try to target it. Knight b4. And finally, at this point, Larsen also accepted the second piece sacrifice. e5, knight takes c6, bishop takes c6, queen a5 check, king d7, bishop takes e5, king e8, queen a6. All the time, white is trying to target black king, but it moved back on its initial square, and now it's more or less in safety. h6, intensifying the pin. Rook goes on a8 and queen e2. Now, for example, bishop takes e7 can be a threat. Queen f5. And now in case of bishop takes uh, g7, uh, king f7 can follow. You have a hanging rook on b1. That's why after queen f5 we see castling king side. And already bishop takes g7 is a threat. That's why uh, Larsen moved away the king from the vulnerable e file. Rook b6. Rook c8, rook a1, bishop e7, rook a7, and now white rooks are intruding inside opponent's camp, trying to find targets. h takes g7, mm, uh, bishop d7 is the move, but we will come back to it later. And now after h takes g7, we see that gradually black is managing to consolidate the position. Queen a1... Uh, Queen b7 is a more active try. Instead, we see queen a1, bishop e6. Gradually, black is now consolidating the position. And it's already starting a counterplay. We have a target on f2, g3, queen f3. Uh, the bishop is untouchable because of bishop h3. That's why white played queen f1. And after rook takes c3, at this point already, uh, Mariotti resigned. Uh, his attack is neutralized successfully, he's now down a piece, and now it's Larsen who is on the attacking side, that's why he decided to resign. 
What I want to do right now is to go through the game while Stockfish is on. From where should we start uh, going through the game? Maybe from this move on. So instead of playing uh, knight c4, we see f takes e5 and uh, an aggressive bishop takes b5 followed. Now in case of uh, accepting the knight sacrifice, uh, bishop takes a6 check can follow and once the dark squared bishop appears on h to b8 diagonal black is finding himself in trouble. Let's play after bishop takes b5, we see a takes b5, queen takes b5, bishop e8 check, king c7, knight b4. We see that stockfish suggests castling king's side. Uh, castling is a very nice move, a highly effective waiting move, also you are moving your king to a safer square and we can see that Blake is in a very tough situation. You are like putting him in Tsuk Tsavang. Whatever Blake plays, his position likes, bec like becomes weaker. Uh, instead we see knight b4. Uh, Blake accepted the peace sacrifice check e5. Uh, and now yeah, you have a king on e1. It's not that easy to attack. Bishop takes c6. The queen is hanging, you can't give a discovered check. That's why we see bishop takes c6, queen a5. Uh, what's wrong with knight takes c6? And rook b7 check is coming, right? And then bishop takes e6. Uh, that's why, yes, we see bishop takes c6, queen takes a5, king d7, check. Uh, white is dominating, of course, all the time. The advantage is on white side, but Larsen is still holding h6. Uh, you can also play queen e2 with nest t discover checks and you can win one of the rooks for example in this case the rook on d8 and then switch your uh, kingside rook into the attack from the third rank. Instead we see h6 which is also a good move. Rook a8, queen e2. At this point there is an interesting queen sacrifice but seems like that it doesn't give white much and again black manages to survive. Here is one of the possible lines. Bishop takes e5, by the way bishop takes h8 is not good because uh, you will lose your queen, that's why we see bishop takes e5, d takes e5, queen a4. Uh, we have an equality. Looks like that white is giving a perpetual check, not really. What if here? Oh, seems like that yes, white is finally managing to give a perpetual check. Instead we see queen e2, but still the advantage is on white side, queen f5. And now queen f5 turns out to be a mistake. White castled, better was a king d8, right? Instead we see queen f5, okay, let's see what's going to happen. Mariotti castled, king f7. Rook b6, again a very precise move, rook c8 and rook a1. Seems like that this is white's last chance and in here, uh, in order to intensify the pressure, you should play rook d1 and switch the rook into the attack from the third rank. Something which Mariotti overlooked played rook a1 and this again allows black to survive. Larsen is managing to get out of this difficult situation. At this point bishop d6 is the move. Here then check and very quickly the position gets simplified. Now you can't go for this move because of rook takes c6. Yeah that's why you should play rook e8, e f4 and still white is dominating. Instead we see h takes g7, king g8, queen a6. Bishop d7, queen a1, a very passive move, at least you should play queen b7. But Mariotti played queen a1 and now gradually it's black who is starting to gain advantage. Another mistake, at least queen b1 should be made, but we see rook b1, rook b7 and already it's white who is in trouble. Queen f3, a very strong move of course. Rook takes c3, resignation followed. A very interesting battle I think. Mariotti threw all his anger at opponent's position, but 
Larson's defense turned out to be impregnable and he not only survived the storm but also with a counterattack forced a resignation. Of course, uh, Larson's defense was not uh, perfect but Moriarty failed to find the right path which could allow him to win the game. I guess his last chance was that rook d1, rook d3, rook f3 idea, right? So this is it dear chess lovers, hope that you liked the game and in the end let's also solve a chess puzzle where the task is to win with the white pieces. As usual we'll wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in my next video.